Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Amy Astro here and I have a new exciting video made just for you guys. Uh, if you are new here, then welcome. If you are currently a subscriber, thank you so much. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel. I appreciate each and every one of you and I hope you all are doing great. But today I thought we would talk about over in Sequence Generator Pro, we would grade our images. And this is to weed out the really obvious bad ones without us having to go look at them through the blink routine in PixInsight. So let me show you guys how it works. Alright, so I'm over here in Sequence Generator Pro and I had an image run last night and I don't really know how good the image run was. And I think we're going to review some of these images because I think what I've got is a mixed bag of nuts and I don't want to waste my time calibrating them if they're just bad images. So the images we took over here on M51 I did them all at two minutes, and in theory, they should be great images, but I have a feeling that is not the complete story. So in Sequence Generator Pro, let's go up to Tools, and let's grade our images. Now what's neat about this is, well, neat, not neat, not really sure how to explain this, but if I have an image that is total garbage, and it rates high on the grade scale, meaning 100% is perfect and zero is really bad, they're grading them basically on a curve against each other. So if the image at a 100% is a garbage image, then well, all of them are gonna be a garbage image. And that's kind of good to know. But what we would like to see is all of our images clustered together and have a really high grade and actually be good. So let's try these out here. I'm going to go to tools. Where are we? Image grade images. Here we go. And it's called the fits image grader. And we have a couple options down here at the bottom. After it grades the images, we can have the files renamed, which is very helpful. And what I have them renamed with is what is the HFR average for this image and what is the overall score rating. This way I could go back and look at them later. And I'm going to have it appended to the file name. So that means it's going to be on the back end of the file itself. And I'm going to just go ahead and leave them in the current directory. I could have them copy to a different directory and have them renamed if I want to. Let's say OK right there. Let's add our files. And I'm going to go, let's see, I've already done that one. Let's look at our green images. And there's 120 seconds. And let's go ahead and grab all of them. Now I could have said Add Folder, which would have been a whole lot easier and eliminated a couple extra mouse clicks. But let's say Open. Now it's opening all my images, and these are the base names where I've got light green, there are two minute images, my focus point, my rotation of the camera, and the gain that I had them set at. And then again, my target was M51, the Whirlpool Nebula. Whirlpool, no, Whirlpool Galaxy. Let's get this straight here. And now all we have to do is we are going to come down here and say grade. And it's going to start opening up each image and it's going to start weighting them and looking at them. And in a couple minutes, they're going to start filling out these items here. Now, kind of the goal is to have a low HFR number and a lot of stars. So the higher this number, chances are the worse the image is going to be. And that's a pretty good way to figure out how things are going. So I'll come right back when these are done grading. All right, so they are all graded here. And what it's done is it added the HFR, the number of stars, and the score. This one's score happens to be 
So I'm pretty sure we can count that guy as a bad image. But if you click on each one of these headers, it will do a sort for you, a low to high, high to low. It's just a toggle. So now I've got my lows. These are my smaller stars going to larger. I can look at my star count. And let's see, 396 to 281. And then, of course, we can do our score. Now it looks like the worst ones are at the top. Now I'm going to clear all these check marks real quick. And we're going to uncheck all. And I'm going to just go ahead and check the ones that it believes are really bad. And I'm going based on this percentage here. And in general, I'll say this was not a great image run. I'm, I mean, I don't even have one at 100%, which is not that great. So now I've just got to use a decide where do I want to go with cutting them off. I'm going to go ahead and knock off, let's say, to 80%. And I know it looks like I'm getting rid of a lot of images here. And I, I probably deserve to get rid of a lot of images. You know, I had some breeze. My guiding was not that great. I just said run and we'll see what we get in the morning. But now that I've got these checked, I'm going to get them mark checked bad. And it's going to add a prefix to all of these images with the word bad. Okay. It doesn't delete them or anything, it just marks them as bad. Now you can also export this data as a CSV file if you really like to compare numbers. Let's say close, and I'm going to close this. Now here's where Curiosity comes in. We're going to open a few of these images and see if we agree with it. All right, we're going to go back to the green folder. And you can see all these bads are the ones that I just said were bad. And let's look at the file name. And let's go to one of these that are one of the high scores. This one is at 79%. And let's open that and see if we agree that at 79% it's just a bad image. Let's see. On the surface, it doesn't look too bad. Let's zoom in. And really, this is not horrible. I do see some dragging on the stars, but I might actually just add this one to my pile and see if the um, subframe selector weeds it out. Okay, so that's a maybe a keep one. Now, the last group that I did, I had to eliminate everything all the way up to 89% because 89% and below were all just garbage images. Let's open up a couple more. Let's look at some of the ones they said were bad. Let's look at 64% on the bad side. And let's zoom in. Okay, now we can see there's definitely some star trailing on there. So I would call 64% definitely a bad image. And let's go ahead and open up the high rated one. Let's see, I got 93%. That looks like the high one, so we'll open it. Now the last group of images, I had a bunch that were clustered together in the 90%, and those were pretty good. Let's zoom in on this guy. And I'll give him an okay rating. I still see some drag in these. These are not perfect images. But I'm hoping with my dithering and stuff that it'll still come out to be a fairly decent image run, something that I can work with. So, you know, take this little, what do you want to call it, this uh, subroutine and sequence generator pro called uh, the Fitz Image Grader. And uh, it's just another tool in your toolbox. It, gives me a very high level look at all my images to decide if I want to keep them or not keep them. But as you can see that they grade against each other, not against what a perfect picture would be. Um, 
yeah, you know, it is kind of neat to use, and I have been using it a lot lately as getting out the obvious really bad ones. Um, but I think I'm going to still take most of these images through and calibrate them and let them get kicked out with the subframe selector over there in Pix and Sight. And uh, just see how many of the bad images are actually keepers in its eyes and something that can be worked with. Well guys, thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate all of you guys. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing below and hit that alert bell so you know when I upload new astro related material. You all can also follow me over there on Patreon as Amy Astro. Currently I have a workbook set of how I process images and pics in sight. They follow up with the two videos I recently posted on YouTube, but it's a nice little handout that will help you walk through all the steps at a later date and apply it to your personal uh, images that you take. And also available on there through Dropbox are all of the images that I used to create this particular tutorial. So it's a really a, a great starting place for those that have never done anything like this. You know, you can watch the video on YouTube, you can follow along in my workbook, and you can process the same images and see what you come up with. So consider following me over there. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'm also in all the usual places, the Facebook, and sometimes I post on Astrobin, sometimes over there in Instagram, although I'm typically mostly Facebook. And I do have a website called amyastro.com. Well guys, thank you for uh, hanging out with me today. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope this video helped you. And I will see you guys in the next video. And I'm wishing you guys great health, clear skies, and remember, I love each and every one of y'all. Goodbye, y'all.